PowerShell discussion, and we're going to talk about a number of things here today. First, I'll introduce myself. I'm Keith Bankston. I'm a program manager in the PowerShell team. My primary focus is on package management at PowerShell Gallery, PowerShell Get, and that area. And if you want to talk about WMI and WinRM, I can talk about that too some other day. Not now. Um, also up here we have Mr. Raghu Shanta. He's a uh, senior developer, senior software engineer, beg your pardon, in the uh, same team that I work on, and he's going to show you some of the things that he did a lightning demo on later, and we'll do introductions about that. Quick review of what we're going to cover. Um, I'm going to, for those of you who are familiar with package management and, and have an idea of the concept, put your hand up real quick. Wow. I like that, it's a good audience. Tougher than I thought. So I'm going to run through the overview material very quickly. It's just give you an outline of what it is and make sure that everybody's up to speed. But that, I'm going to run past that very rapidly. If you have questions about that, you can catch me later. Then we're going to talk about the things you know probably a little better. PowerShell Get, PowerShell Gallery. And then go a little bit more into the package management improvements, some of the things that we've done in Windows Server uh, TP5 that's coming out, and some of the other changes we've made since uh, WMF5 RTM has happened, and, and also in WMF5 RTM. And then we're going to put it all together, and we're going to leave the majority of the time available for Ragu to talk through setting up a PowerShell gallery, a private PowerShell gallery, and the code that he did the five minute, two brief demo on yesterday. So what are we talking about when we say package management? The goal is pretty simple. There's one command that you can use anywhere in Windows that says install this thing, make it happen. A lot of folks are familiar with apt get on Linux. You do apt get something and especially on something like Ubuntu, where they've done a really good job of curating a list of things that's there. You say apt get foo, and if foo is in the list, you get foo. Well, you have to do sudo apt get foo. Now, because we're Microsoft, we don't do apt get. We do something like install package, because we think it makes more sense. Same concept. You got the idea. We want to make it easier for folks to get stuff of a variety of types of installation mechanisms use the same command approach to get it onto your box. Now, in WMF5 and TP5, we've created the ability to abstract a lot of the, the Windows components and, and get those onto your systems. And we've also added um, repository management. And, and we'll do quick demos of these things along the way. Package management, though, is going to become a lot more important when you start talking about nano server. Y'all have heard Jeffrey Snover's basic vision. Nano server is this minimal box, and by minimal I mean I've got just enough to connect to the box and do install package to get the other stuff I need and control it that way. That's actually one of the key elements that we're trying to accomplish ultimately is by keeping nano server under your control, the set of things that are going to be installed there. So package management is central to that vision. And when we talk about package management, a lot of you guys in particular are familiar with this in terms of dealing with the PowerShell gallery. And we're pretty proud of it. We've had a few uses since we released that officially back in last June. But it's also about control, and it's about giving you the control over where the packages are coming from based on the package type. And that's one of the elements that we'll talk through. Package management architecture, this is stuff that you all should be fairly familiar with. There's a set of commandlets. You can always use the install or the, the basic package management commandlets to do this stuff. You just have to supply more parameters. So you can do the same thing that you can do in, in PowerShell Get as long as you know all the stuff that we're feeding into the parameter set. Or you can use PowerShell Get and say, go you know, find DSC resource and not have to do the filtering. But package management, install package will still accomplish the job for you. 
the basic core, we do the uh, discovery. We'll find stuff based on the sources that are registered on your local box. Then install or save it locally and allow you to do some kind of inventory so that when you say, what are all the things that I've installed from that type of, of installer, we can get a list of it for you. We have a set of package management providers already. Windows Server apps, that's kind of like an AppX package type, all right? Kind of. It's, it's something that we need some differences from that in order to support Windows Server components. Uh, PowerShell get, Windows containers, new get, there's a bunch of them that are actually available for you. And the package sources, every one of those package types can support more than one package source and I'll show you that in a minute. So, PowerShell get. Is there anyone in here who has not used PowerShell get? Okay. We have developed the PowerShell gallery in order to support people sharing stable code. That's the, that's the goal behind it. It's not stuff where you put test stuff out there. When you've got something that you're actually willing to share with the community, it's relatively stable, we want it out in the gallery. But you don't actually download something directly from the gallery. You use the gallery to go find things, to find out who did it, to find out information about the stuff that's there. You use PowerShell Get and the commandlets that are part of PowerShell Get to acquire that thing. You can also do find, we'll show you that in just a second, but you're going to acquire the package, you're going to put it on your local box, save, take a quick look at it, always do a save first, investigate, in God we trust, nobody else. Um, then when you are comfortable that this is something that you want on your box, then you do an install module. When you do an install module, we'll keep a list of the things that you've installed, and we'll get rid of it for you. This is all the PowerShell get specific versions of package management. And as a part of delivering this in Windows uh, uh, WMF5 and these previews, we made sure that we supported side-by-side -side module versioning and dependencies, and those two go hand-in-hand. In hand. Part of that is when I write a module, and I put it out on the PowerShell gallery, and this gentleman here takes a dependency on my module, he can build that into his module. And say, I want, an ex I want to be able to know that I can get that version of that module to go with my code. And um, anybody see the article about N NPM the, uh, about two weeks ago? When you put something out on the PowerShell gallery, we don't let you delete it today. And if you want to have access to the article about NPM broke the internet, um, you can look that up. People ask us about this. The point being, you can take, I can take a dependency and he can take a dependency on a specific version of a module. But then what happens if I want the latest version of a module? Well, I have to be able to install the latest version side by side. That's why we have support for both elements. We've added script support. We've added support for internal galleries, which is what Red is going to show you. The ability to say, I want to get all of this stuff from something I've tested. And we've also made some other changes. There was this comment out in the group that when you used PowerShell Get, we had a minus version alias. Minus version works fine for install package. Install package minus version gets you at least the version you specified. It maps to minimum version. The problem was that when you did the uninstall version, it mapped to that as the minimum version, so it would also get rid of everything newer than that. So we've made some changes. We've gotten rid of that alias, and now you get to specify Minimum version, maximum version, required version. Again, you guys told us this thing's evil, we fixed it. We've added credential support, we've improved proxy support. People got to us, told us these things aren't working, so we've made some changes in the system. Commands that are available in PowerShell Get, well, mostly it's about how you manipulate modules, how you manipulate repositories, and then also how you manipulate scripts. 
there's a lot of concern about, well, we're going to open this door and everybody's going to put scripts out there instead of modules. We're being very explicit, folks. We want you to put modules out there. Why? Because modules include documentation. They include tests. They include examples. These are the best practices for things that you need to put out into the PowerShell gallery. There is a place for putting scripts out there. We have support for it, but we prefer that you use modules. All right? So, a little bit of commentary on how we've been doing with PowerShell Gallery. I said you all have been working with it and adopting it fairly well. As of, I guess it was mid-February, we passed one million downloads. Or 1.4 million now. It's growing rapidly. The statistics page shows this hockey stick of growth. And if you are familiar with it, that, that actually says we're very stable. So as of about mid-February, we realized we are stable enough. Plus, we had implemented the support for antivirus scanning. And also, we built in script analyzer scanning to make sure that the code that's coming into the gallery meets a, meets a basic bar so people can trust it. A lot of what we focus on is ensuring that the features that we're adding are about trust. The people who publish, we have about 700 people who've registered to publish, okay? We have about 700,000 people who are downloading. You guys can do the math. We will focus our energies on ensuring that the people who are requiring content that experience is optimized. And so there will be times, occasionally, when you're going to come in and say, well, that, that seems like you're putting a little extra burden on the publisher. That's because we want the things that are out on the gallery to be something that somebody can look at and make a trust decision. Yes, I trust it. No, I don't. Some of the lightning demos that you saw yesterday, including be viewing scripts, including some of the other things that we show here, those are being put into place so that people know I can trust this content. We're also adding in um, integration with Azure Automation and some improved filtering. I'll show you that UI in just a little bit. Um, Is this an okay time for questions? Would you rather have them at the end? I'd rather have them at the end because I'm going to try to run through this pretty quick. I've got to leave in time. Okay? So, Real quick, let's do some demo because otherwise you guys will kill me. Okay. So, basic PowerShell get functions, and boy, that's just in a bad spot. Sorry, folks, I've got to figure out how to use the mouse with this thing sitting here. So, get command. This is all the stuff that's available in PowerShell get, and I've already done this. Now, one of the things that you will see here is you can find, do some filtering in PowerShell Get in order to find the things that you're looking for. And a lot of people don't know how to go about this. So I thought I would spend just a minute and show you how to do that. Right now we have a number of things that are out in the gallery that talk about the ISE, right? <coughs> so which one is actually the one that came from Microsoft? Well, uh, looks like that one is, PowerShell ISE Preview. So if you go ahead and you add, you have to do the filtering the way that you guys are familiar with. It's where object and author, and I'll publish all this stuff. You're going to see a lot more of our documentation increasing here. But this is one of the most commonly asked questions. How do I find things in the gallery based on the author? Okay, How do I find something in the gallery where the author is Amazon? Okay, so the, the point being trust, you can go ahead and you can locate the things that you care about in the gallery based on who it is and whether or not you uh, can trust them. One of the other elements of trust is, okay, what are the things that this depends on? I already told you I can take a dependency on your module. Well, one of the 
things that this history PX module, which by the way seems like a pretty good module, I skimmed through the code the other day. Did anybody in here write that? It's Kurt. 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 I didn't see Kurt, so all right. Um, so he's got a set of dependencies that are available on that module, right? And what we talk about is you need to know what it is that you are installing on your system. I can do a save module and all of those dependencies will get installed onto my box and you can read through that here as, as the verbose commands go by. You see snippet px right there is one of the elements that was a dependency. And we will install those dependencies. Just like I said, I can take a definite dependency on something somebody else wrote and it will get installed using PowerShell get. So again, these are all about what can I trust. And that's the main focus that we have for the gallery. All right. So now let's take a look at what's actually in the gallery. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things that you saw a little bit of UI about is we've had a number of questions in the last little bit about where, how, how do I find all of the modules that don't have DSC in them? Did you all see the lightning demos yesterday? Yeah. Okay, well this is one of my favorite pieces of UI because it responds to, I've got 181 items in this test gallery. And no, I'm going to try hard not to show you that URL because that's our test gallery. Yes, it's live. Don't use it if you discover it. It's there and we will blow up your stuff if you put it there. We will. Um, but if I want to see just the commandlets and just the functions, the things that contain just the commandlets and functions, this new filtering UI, which will be out in the next few weeks, is something that you can go ahead and, and take advantage of. And again, it's trying to make sure that you can find what you're after. All right? Now, the other elements of, and I'm going to steal this because you know, uh, okay, no, actually, I'm going to run short on time. So I'm going to go ahead and, and skim past. I will publish this. This demo includes how to use this filtering UI to look for the same kinds of things that you can. And one of the key elements is owner. Oops, type. Um, The only piece of searching that you can do, or the only way you can do searching for owner, and owner is the actual uh, person who published the package, is by using this UI today. Okay, you can't find it in the um, search functions in any of find uh, module or find DSC resource. So this is a quick tip. I, it's the only one of the demos that I'm going to show here now in the interest of time. But if you want to find out everything from PowerShell team or from Kurt or from anybody else, the best way to do that is in the gallery, you search for owner is equal, uh, owner and then the owner name, all right? And yes, I'm running through this kind of quick and my apologies. Package management improvements. Main things that we've added, support for containers. Nano server optional packages are coming in TP5. Windows server, Packages, again, coming to TP5. The ability to deploy something onto the nano box when TP5 ships in the next couple of months, you should be able to try this out. We are very much looking forward to your feedback on how well that works. Multiple package provider versions side by side. This is something that will start to count more as you write your own package providers. A package provider is, I'm going to take a blob of goo that is going to be put onto my box, unpacked somehow, and run through some process at the end of which it's installed, right? Lava goo gets put on my box package. Lava goo. All right, fine. I can have multiple versions of a package provider that I use for different things. And I do this with my own PowerShell Get package provider because I have the internal gallery and I have the external gallery and I have both of them registered and both of them tested locally so that I can work back and forth between them, between the dev environment and the production environment. Event log support, 
Well, if you're going to do something on a machine, it'd be nice to know that you can actually see what happened. And we've also, again, we've gotten rid of this nasty minus version thing. We've created um, the ability to install the NuGet provider locally, and uh, we've added credential support. So let's fine. Let's go first to. It's really in my way, folks. I'm sorry. Here's the set of package providers that I've got on my local box. And you can see that I've got MSI, MSU, NuGet, a bunch of things that are present there, and different package sources. And this is where you start to see I've got two package sources. Don't write that URL down. But the point is, those package sources are there, and this is one of the tools that you can take advantage of. A lot of people are asking, when I create my internal gallery, how do I control and make sure that the systems only use that internal gallery? Well, the way that I do that is I register the package source for um, PowerShell Get to be the internal repository, and I remove the default uh, PowerShell GET registration for PowerShell Gallery. Now, when I use PowerShell GET, all those commandlets will only go to your internal gallery. So package source, uh, set package source, and get package source, this allows you to manage where you're getting things from. One of the other things that you need to be aware of is we're not the only people who are publishing package management providers. It turns out that there's a few other people who are putting things on the gallery as well. You'll notice that the uh, GIST provider is out there. And we've got an example that I'll show you here in just a minute that will walk you through how to create your um, package management providers. <clears throat> jQuery is one of the NuGet packages that's available. I've got The problem with jQuery is that it's available on more than one location. Okay, so there's something I want to show you here, and, and, I, and I'm going to back this up just a little bit. If I do a find package jQuery, the first thing that happens is I check all of the package locations that are available that are registered on my box. Okay? If I want that to run a little bit faster, I either use the source or the provider name in order to find the one that I'm after. Then I can go ahead and save it, install it, and manipulate it. Um, so one of the other elements that I can do is I can take advantage of the fact that I can handle um, all of the installed versions of a module. So I installed two versions of desired state configuration from the gallery, all right? I want to be able to say, make sure that I only have the right version of my module present. Oops. Oh, that's right. Version's gone. <coughs> Gee. We got rid of version. <laughs> all right. You guys are all going to make the same mistake I just did. You're going to try to use version. The reason we got rid of version is because I've got two versions of X uh, desired state configuration there. Right? I don't want to have version. Treat it like minimum version and delete everything off my box. Use required version when you want to use that parameter. Okay. Now, one other thing that people have been asking us for is the ability, can you see that font there, or do I need to zoom it in? It needs to be a bit bigger. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this. <coughs> Visible? Yeah. All right. So, get the package providers available on this box. Well, it turns out 
This box isn't connected to the internet. It's not connected to anything. It's a little VM that's local. One of the things that folks have asked us for is the ability to say, how do I deal with packages and get with the new Git installation? Every time you use PowerShell Git, the first thing that happens is I get this, it's, it, you need to install new Git warning. You guys seen this? Yes, you yeah. have. Okay, so I have a local copy of this thing available right here as of the latest version of the um, pa package management, I can do install package provider and it will go ahead and update it and put it on the local machine. You'll be able to get rid of those warnings forever. So in your sequences for your installations, you're gonna be able to um, get the new get provider that you want, put it on a local share, treat that as a local source, install it, you get rid of that nasty message. So that now I have one, no more funny warning messages such as you saw before. Right, all those funny warning messages are gone. And two, I have the package, the new get package uh, available. Okay. So there's only one more thing that I really want to show you, and that's, that's authoring a package management provider. Zhen Yin, who's sitting over here, wrote this example back in November, or thereabouts, October. If you go out to github.com slash one get, which is also uh, one get.org, you'll be able to find the my item <coughs> sample provider. If you take a look at that, what it implements is the ability to copy PNG files as a package, which is, you know, it's cute, but what it does is it's a very good example of the things that you need to implement in order to implement your own provider. And why should you care? We talked a lot about giving you control. Let's say you take PowerShell Get uh, uh, package provider, and you want it to be just a little bit different, or you take the new Git package provider, you want it to be just a little bit different. You want it to work with your own local repository. You want it to use credentials that are available on your own local repository and required. You would make a modification to that base code and update it to fit your needs. So going back to my other window, the thing that I'm gonna point out here is there's a couple of required things that you have to implement. And unfortunately, these things don't really do anything. These are the registration elements that are required. You gotta implement them, because otherwise package management doesn't know your package provider is there. But that's not where you do the work, okay? What you really need to take a look at in this example is this set of optional elements that actually do all the work. The get feature, get dynamic options. Dynamic options are the things that are the optional parameters, the things that you can supply. Everybody who is going to write their own package management provider will take advantage of this. This is where you would maybe include something like credentials. Most likely, if you're gonna be building something around credentials, it wouldn't be optional, but you can, you can see where that fits. <clears throat> the other thing that you're going to want to handle is dealing with the package source. So the add package source and resolve package source are critically important so that you can know where to go from this package management provider to get something. So you stand up your own internal repository. It's a new get based repository. You're storing stuff out there and you're going to require credentials. You'll set that up in your own version of the new get uh, package provider. You'll release it as my new get package provider. You'll resolve the package source to your internal new get gallery and require the credentials, okay? So take a look at this thing and I'm going to recommend that you go through this code. It's actually pretty simple, straightforward, and easy to follow. If I can, you can. Trust me, okay? So. Last element, how these concepts relate to a CI CD pipeline. And I've been running through this stuff pretty fast. 
This whole week is primarily about how does this fit within DevOps. Package management is here so that what you can do is you can say, I know where to get the things that belong on my box. You can set up your internal repository. You can register as long as you understand what the package source type is and you're not modifying it. You can take the existing package type and say the source for all packages of this type are here. Everything that I've validated is here. All of my servers are only going to go here to fetch something. Then your release pipeline can make sure that everything gets published there. Your DSC resources, when they run, will only get things from there. All right, so this is all about ensuring that you have the control to drive the system the way that you want to. So now what we're really going to do is we're going to dance here. Raghu and I are going to swap out machines real quick. And I'm going to let Raghu show you how we put it all together for the internal repository of P uh, private PowerShell gallery repositories. So I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of things about how do you set up your own uh, private gallery uh, in your enterprise, for example, and uh, how do you populate your gallery with the things you need, and uh, you know how we can uh, make sure all the machines in your enterprise can point to this gallery and uh, you know uh, get all the work done. So this will be a mostly a technical deep dive of the configuration and the DSA resources and all the things which make up the system. Okay. So if people start want to I mean look at the code, it's on our PowerShell GitHub page. So if you go to PS Private Gallery, you can take a look at the modules and the configuration. Uh, so there are a couple of high-level configurations which are uh, Sort of customer facing. One is uh, the ability to deploy your own uh, private gallery, which is this configuration. So essentially, what it's doing is uh, it's setting up your uh, you know front end, which is IIS in this case. It's setting up the database and it uh, sets up all the entity framework related aspects. So you could take a new get. Uh, gallery code base and plug it in here and it should set up a NuGet based uh, repository. So it's got four high level steps. So what I'm going to do is uh, kick this up first and then you know explain as to the different components of the configuration itself. So let's go ahead and uh, run this on the machine. So if I look at my uh, IS, so I don't have uh, any website set up. And I'm going to run this configuration to set up my gallery infrastructure. Does IIS need to be installed first? Uh, this does all that. So you can take a brand new VM or a machine and just run this configuration. It's going to install all the dependencies. It's going to turn on the Windows features. It's going to do everything for you. Will this run on server core? Will it run on server core? Yes. So wherever. Uh, you know, you got the IS, uh, server manager, command lets, and uh, DSC, it should run. It's flashing, so we make sure that this is connected. There we go. Is the package as a composite resource? There are composite resources. Some are class-based resources, so I'm going to go through the code. Um, so I just wanted to uh, show you how quick and easy it is to deploy your own private gallery. This is just a deployment phase. We haven't gotten to the populating phase yet. So let me go back. Yeah, so in under 60 seconds, which is about a minute, it was able to you know, deploy your private gallery. 
So let me go back and refresh. And yeah, it's set up your own uh, private gallery and it's running under uh, a user which is low privileged. In this case, it's a non admin user called Gallery Admin. That's the app it's running under. So let me go back to my browser and try to browse this gallery. I set it up on port 8080. So the first time it has to start the IS service and takes a couple of seconds. Yeah, so there it is. So I just changed the branding information to be more generic. Uh, you could put your own branding. Can we just insert vacation OBS? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, it probably needs a couple of other steps in the configuration, but uh, I think as we evolve the project on the GitHub page, we will add all that capability. So yeah, this was just a proof of concept to show you that you could set up a private gallery. Don't worry about it, we're good. Yeah, it comes back. And uh, the only the yeah, it didn't happen. Maybe I have a bad connection. The only things I have enabled on this page is uh, the ability to you know discover modules and publish modules, and uh, change the branding information and the ability to set up local users. So this is the deployment phase. I was able to set up a a bare bone gallery in about a minute. And you should be able to use package management commandlets, the PowerShell get commandlets to actually interact with this gallery. So let me go ahead and do that. Actually before that, let's actually kick off the publishing part so that we can. It's actually a VM running locally. Which one does it? first where I talk about the, how the gallery is actually deployed uh, and to go over the code let's use our github page so the configuration Happening, I can use a local code to show you what's the component of the configuration. I think a we'll walkthrough of the code is probably your best. Yeah. Way. So this configuration is controlled by this configuration data, and all we are doing here is uh, we are consuming uh, a couple of uh, credential files to to set up the gallery itself for the app pool. And you can also control, you know, the name of the website and where you want to deploy it and where to pick up the the branding from, and uh, also the the database itself. In this case, uh, it's a one box scenario. I'm installing SQL Express on the same box, but you could you could change this to use full SQL and you know a different machine, and you can use a connection string to point to the box. So part one is setting up of the web server itself, and that involves a couple of things. One is uh, installing all the dependencies and uh, installing the website itself. And this is actually a composite configuration. Yes. 
and all of them are shipped in the PS gallery module and we'll make this available on the gallery soon um, and, the, and the configuration I want to show is the configuration to set up the web server which is this and let's actually go and open that configuration which sets up the front end and as you can see it actually does a bunch of things under the hood things like installing all the dependencies setting up the users and uh, you know setting up the app pool uh, doing all your file copies for the the branding and the gallery content itself setting up the website and all that so all the complexity is uh, collapsed into <coughs> this composite configuration and uh, what you see uh, on the front is just one single configuration to just do the web server. It's similar for database. So I'll quickly go over the database resource, which is this. So this is actually installing your SQL Express package itself. So you can take a empty VM and you know kick this off and it's going to do everything for you. Um, it's going to set up your instance, it's going to set up your database, and it's going to use the credentials you supplied in the manifest configuration data. So these are the primary couple of resources to set up the front end and the database. There's also the migration part. It's called migration because uh, NuGet uses entity framework. And uh, we are actually uh, creating the schema in the database. We are populating with, with empty tables and all that here. Uh, and this is specific to, some of this is specific to SQL Express. And you could plug in your own uh, migration logic if you want to deploy a different kind of a repository. And those pieces are separated out. Uh, credential in the database. Yeah, I see the way that you did that. Yeah, CL, CLI, XML, is that something? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. actually, credential <coughs> object and export is an export CLI. Exactly. XML. So, yeah. before you kick this off, you can uh, take a credential object, uh, something like this. Uh, you can say dollar credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So dollar thread will have your credentials and you can actually export this into a, a file, basically you're serializing it to a file. <coughs> yes, this is. So the password is a secure string and the username will be coded as this. And actually, in the configuration, we actually read that file uh, here. We actually import it and then use it. This is one way of supplying configuration. If you if you want to make it more secure, you can avoid using the. Uh, you can use actually certs. Yeah. So let's go ahead with the rest of the things. So that's a database resource and. Uh, uh, the migration part. Let me quickly go over the migration part where we actually populate it with uh, the schema and it uses the actual connection string to the database. This is actually a mock based resource. So this is part one where we bring up an empty instance of the gallery, which is this. So now we'll kick off part two, which is populating the gallery with certain modules and then we'll talk about uh, what is that span kind of about? So in part two, what you're actually doing is you're, uh, you're populating your local instance or your private instance. OK, I don't have internet. That's why it's failing. You're, you're populating your <laughs> private instance with uh, modules from the source gallery. In this case, uh, I'm actually uh, saying that my source gallery is the public gallery and my destination gallery is the one I created uh, privately. 
and uh, I also need uh, to know what modules I want to put in the local instance. So let's say in your, in your enterprise you have uh, dependencies on certain modules and certain versions, you can code up all that here. Uh, just an example. And this publishing configuration is actually very interesting. It does a bunch of things. So it actually registers your uh, source and private galleries first so that it knows where to pick up things from and where to put it to. And it sets up a user for your gallery. So you can do all your user management uh, using a DSC configuration. Um, the user means this user here. So you can manage local users. So we will add uh, domain users later. And the last part is uh, uh, the, the publishing pieces where uh, uh, the configuration actually takes uh, specified modules from the source and publishes it to the destination. And we are actually using the latest and greatest features from WMF5 and Windows 10 to do this. So things like run as credentials. So you know, all this is running under the context of uh, the Apple user, which is low privileged user. So none of these run as uh, you know, high privileged or the system context. So we are very careful as to what to run it under. And let's quickly go over the code for uh, the publishing pieces. So for this, it's actually a class-based resource. Um, and there are, two, there are two resources. One is uh, the gallery module, which does the, the publishing. And one is the user management resource. Yeah, here. So you can create a local user and you can manage it. And for the publishing piece, we are actually using the public interfaces of the, the private gallery you just set up. So we're actually using the package management commandlets and PowerShell gets commandlets to accomplish that. So we are using uh, things like uh, find module to discover uh, what you needed from the public gallery and actually save module to actually take the module and put it on the local machine. We don't inst install anything on this machine. We save it in a temporary location and then we publish it using the the public interfaces of the private gallery. So we, you know, we go through the published interfaces. Yeah, if I had internet connection, I would have showed you when you populate it, uh, you can actually see these counters going up. But I don't know if you have time for that. No, you don't yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So all this is DSC based. Check it out. The whole code is on GitHub. Uh, on PS Private Gallery. I already see a few uh, issues being opened uh, for requests, so we will take a look at them. And this is actually a community-driven project, so if you guys have ideas, or if you want to contribute, please do so. We'll take in full requests. And Thank you all very much. We realize that was a lot to try to jam into 45 minutes. Uh, at least we realize it now. Thank you for your patience. And if you have any questions, June, I know that you had one. Be happy to take them offline. But let's. It's already dead. We ran over. Five minutes.